Hello, and welcome back to Tiki Tuesday. I'm Brian Miller. I'm an artist for Star Wars, The X-Files, all kinds of fun stuff, including now the Smithsonian. So it's really exciting to be back and to see you. Uh, welcome, everybody, to Tiki Tuesday. Hope you're having a great time. Uh, looking forward to our time together tonight. Uh, good to see you, Monique. Good to see you, Ash Corbin. Thanks for joining us, everybody out there. Uh, we are live on YouTube, on Facebook, and on Twitch. The chat is happening on Twitch. So if you want to join the chat, head on over to Twitch. Search for Octopolis, and you'll find us there, and you can join in the chat. But wherever you're watching from, welcome. We're glad to have you here. And uh, hey, it's Tiki Tuesday. Let's have a cocktail. Just happen to have one right here. Give that a nice shake. going to be tasty I can already tell oh yeah we're gonna fill it up fill it up all right we have a little bit left there all right well cheers to all of you on this beautiful Tiki Tuesday mmm and that's good we're drinking that out of our very own tipsy rum barrel mug this one's available from Tiki Tango. Tiki Tango in Atlanta, you can go to their website and grab this mug right now. So if you wanna uh, support the stream, head on over to Tiki Tango and get yourself a Tipsy Rum Barrel mug. Mm. And Monique is uh, cheering in and saying, stay alive, don't drink and drive, hashtag PSA, yeah. Definitely enjoy your adult beverage from home. Um, let me get this mug out of the way here so I don't have a crazy shadow. You might be able to hear my cat in the background. He's an adopt a cat, he's going through a screaming phase. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Whitney says, And we're back. That's right, and we're back for Tiki Tuesday. So tonight we are going to be drawing the um. The Bali High, now we've done a different Bali High in the past, the East Coast Bali High. Uh, tonight we'll be doing the one from Shelter Island, San Diego. So it's been around there for, I don't know, 65 plus years. Uh, they did like a $4 million re renovation a few years ago. Monique says, oh, kitty. And Catherine cheered 100 bits. Holy crap, thank you, Catherine. Thank you so much. I tried to come on a few minutes early tonight just for you guys, Whitney and Catherine. Uh, said sorry we missed the last couple sorry hey no worries um, I missed one in there so what are you gonna do life's happening it, is it just me or you know people keep saying like we're gonna get back to normal we're gonna get back to normal I think things are actually more hectic than normal now Whitney cheered 100 bits thank you Whitney oh my gosh guys you, you're triggering a countdown to a hype train do you know how long it's been since we've had a hype train we have like four minutes to initiate a hype train. I don't even know if we have enough people on the stream to do that, but uh, hey, anybody who's got some bits and wants to cheer or slap a stick, I don't know, do we, do we decide if stickers and stuff count or not? I don't know, I would keep it to bits and then we know something good will happen. But anyway, thank you guys so much, appreciate that. But yeah, I think the world's hectic right now. Like we all got adopted to our Zoom meetings during the pandemic and now it seems like we have to have you know, 10 emails and a Zoom meeting and whatever else for something that would have just been like one email before the pandemic. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? And like, things have been so crazy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Whitney redeemed a hydrate and Monique redeemed a posture check. Well, thank you both. There's the posture check. No cracking neck yet. I did snap it earlier though. And cheers to you guys with the hydrate. Mmm, man, that's good. Nice ice cold tonight, too. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Are things more hectic for you now than they were before the pandemic? Like, we went through this long phase where the comic book work was kind of slow, and then all of a sudden, like, Christy had to turn down five projects last week. So, uh, I mean, they were all, like, extreme rush, crazy projects. But still, the fact that she had to turn them down was, was kind of kooky. So, I don't know. Everything just feels really hectic 
like there's less time. Maybe it is back to normal and we just didn't realize how hectic our lives were before. I don't know. But uh, it definitely seems like there's just no personal time right now. Everything, or just running all the time. We're on a Zoom meeting. I've got some virtual events coming up and some live events coming up. I'll tell you guys about those. But I just, I haven't had any time to myself. I mean, Christy and I haven't got to have a date night or hardly see each other. It's just, it's been so kooky. So, I don't know, what do you guys think? Will that be the different, will that be the next phase of like crowdfunding and Patreon and stuff? Like, instead of people being like, support me in my career, they'll just be like, oh my gosh, support me so I can have a weekend, you know, like that kind of thing. Hype train incoming! What, what? All right, limited time to earn extra emotes, people. It's hype train time. Monique cheered 100 bits. Oh, she cheered 200 bits, 100 times two. Oh, so you can use a subscription gift, uh, subscribe yourself, or bits to unlock that hype train. We know how this works, guys. I can't believe with, we've got such a small number of viewers tonight, we got the hype train going. You guys are awesome. Catherine cheered 100 bits. Uh, Whitney says, it's a different kind of hectic for me. It feels like nothing has changed and everything has changed. You know what? I think you're right, Whitney. I think it's like we, um, it's like Rip Van Winkle. Like we, we woke up in an alternate universe or something. The, the post-pandemic universe is not the same universe that we left, you know? It's like, we think we're in the same universe, but we're not. Oh my goodness, Monique cheered 31 bits. All right, we've got four minutes left on this hype train. We're like a third of the way there. I think we just like, what, maybe, what, 400 more bits? 500 more bits would unlock it? I don't know, we're close, people, we're close. Keep it, keep it, keep it going. Monique cheered 14 bits. I really like those unicorn bits too, Monique. Those are like super, super duper cute. They make me want to party. It's gonna be a hype train party. Way to go, Monique. Now I know there's a couple other people watching. I don't know if you have bits or not, but if you do, join our hype train party tonight. You could unlock yourself an extra emote or three. Those are always fun to use. You can be able to use those here and anywhere else on Twitch. So and Monique says, I'm out of bits, lol. No, I, hey, you did good, Monique. And especially, I know you're dialing in remote tonight. So, so well done, well played, good for you. But yeah, I do think it's like an alternate universe. It's really crazy. I've been talking to lots of people I know who are kind of saying similar things, you know? Saying that like, work is almost more crazy than it was before the pandemic because now they've got sort of like all their normal responsibilities plus all these new like streaming and online responsibilities. Oh my gosh guys, we're at 40% of the hype train with two minutes to go. Ooh, Whitney slapped a Unidab sticker. Unidab! For 100 bits. <laughs> Monique's like, I'm on my phone from a parking lot. Yeah, we know you're in, you're, you're in remote tonight. You're so good, Monique. See, that was a good test, Whitney. I love that sticker, but I don't know if, if those count towards the hype train or not. It didn't seem to move the meter at all. But you know what? It's fine. It was fun. I love those stickers. I love the stickers and the sound effects. Even if the hype train is biased. It's twitchist. Twitcherist. Something like that. <laughs> Hey guys, let me know what your what your beverage is tonight. We know Monique's in a oh Whitney subscribed to tier one on eleven month streak or on a one month streak, but eleven months total. He's like, I demand a refund. Ha ha ha. Yeah, on the on the sticker. All right, seventy two percent with fifty seconds to go. Oh my gosh. 
Are we gonna make it? Catherine cheered 100 bits. Are we are we gonna, gonna legit have like three people unlock a hype train? Oh, so close. 35 seconds. We're 78%. Oh my goodness. Ah, oh, all right. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna close my eyes and not look. It's too scary. I don't know what to do. Oh. Catherine shared 100 more bits. 84%. Oh my goodness. All right, all of you out there in Twitch land. You're letting Catherine and Whitney and Monique do all the work here. Catherine shared another 100 bits. 90% with three seconds to go. 96, 98. Do we do it? Oh, I think we got it, guys. Woo! Hype train. <laughs> Way to go, Whitney, Catherine, Monique. I cannot believe you guys did that hype train. Woo hoo! Well done, you guys. That's awesome. Congratulations to all of you. I'm not even gonna talk about level two. It's not even worth bothering with. But as soon as that runs out, we're gonna get some new emotes, people. Well played, everybody. Good, got the hype train with like three people participating. That's unheard of, it's amazing. Well done, you guys. It's freaking fantastic. When he's like, whoo, I need a drink now. That was exhausting. Yes, cheers to all of you. And uh, let me know what you're drinking tonight. That wasn't exhausting, it was exhilarating. You guys made it look easy. I'm so proud of you. Talking about coming through in the clutch, boom. It's like super hype train. That's what that was. <laughs> I like it. Catherine's calling it hype train. <laughs> yeah, we don't even, we don't even have quench press here yet. Apparently, ash is lurking. Boy, that's hilarious. What he said, and we all earn free commissions. Well. I don't know about that. I mean, I really love you guys. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I don't know about commissions, but, you know, next time a package goes out, who knows? Something could fall in there. Anything's possible. Because I got nothing but love for you guys. Uh, Monique's like, I'm enjoying a bottle of water in the cup holder. Well, that's the way to do it, I guess, when you're on the road and driving. This tiki dude has got some crazy teeth, people. Probably won't know until I get it all shaded in, but crazy teeth. He's got crazy teeth. Tiki's got crazy teeth. So this is the, so what I'm gonna do is like, this will be the building, and then this is their big tiki, but I'm just kind of putting it off to the side so that way we can see both. Uh, Catherine's like, on that hype note, I'm off to that. Aw, uh, well, thanks for joining us for a little while, Catherine. I tried to start a little early so you'd, you'd have some time, so I do appreciate you hanging out, and have a very good night. Oh, and Monique's like, driving with kids. Yeah, you definitely, you gotta be responsible I will tell you guys a story that I overheard today. Well, it's a story that Christy overheard and then she told me, so I overheard her telling me. Um, this conversation was overheard in the salon is all I can say. So, uh, oh, Catherine says, see you next week, the time changes. Yeah, that's right. Everyone's time changes, but mine. So it'll still be seven o'clock my time, but then what, it'll be, will be an hour earlier for you? If so, that'll be good, because that means we'll get, we'll get um, chow time and rainy cakes more often too. And I'm hoping like November, December, 
have some time to really do some good Tiki Tuesdays. I've got some ideas when I have some new craft cocktails and Tiki drinks on here. So hopefully we'll have a nice fall, winter Tiki Tuesday time. Tiki Tuesday time! You can't beat it. You can't beat it with a stick. You can't beat it with some twitch. Monique says, we must fall back at home. There you go, fall back. So then it would be an hour earlier for you. Oh, Whitney says, yes, seven to eight. Oh, that's good. That's excellent. Oh, so yeah, that's right, because all my time will line up with your time in Colorado. Yeah. Uh, it's so weird when you live in Arizona and you don't do daylight savings time because we just get used to the time never changes for us. And so half the year, there you go, guys. New emotes. You received a level one hype train emote. Gonna share it out to everybody now. Boom. Well done, everybody. Oh, you're getting new emotes right now. They're being delivered to you. Enjoy your emotes. And well done. And you know, everybody gets those emotes, every subscriber, so. You guys should thank Monique and Whitney and Catherine for all their hard work tonight. But yeah, we don't do we don't do time. So um, oh, Catherine's the top of the leaderboard now. Look at that, kicking ass. All right, here, here we go. New emote. Oh yes, we got a dolphin with sunglasses, guys. That's perfect for Tiki Tuesday. A dolphin with sunglasses. It's the perfect emote for us. All right. We'll have to nominate one of you to be Dusa the Dolphin. <laughs> Looks like Whitney is going to be Dusa the Dolphin. I love it. You guys unlocked the Dolphin emote. How badass is that? I'm going to be using that all the time now. And you know I will. You know it's true. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I love dolphins too. All right, Tiki Idol. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, that's a cool emote. I dig that. Hmm. Well, guys, I've been talking about it for months and months and months, but the whole Smithsonian thing, they finally announced. So that's really exciting. I don't know if any of you guys have seen any of the images on social media yet or not, but I've got eight new illustrations that will be live at Smithsonian starting on November the 20th. Oh, Monique's using the new dolphin emote too. I love it. That's great. <laughs> And so a lot of people are asking if I'm going to be at Smithsonian for the opening on November 20th. And sadly, I'm not. I'm not going to be at the opening. They were nice. They invited me to that. Um, but um, all the people that were involved from the Arizona State University side um, elected to, to forego the opening because we've been invited to a very special event. A very special event. I'm sorry, I was reading the, the chat. Um, uh, says Streamlabs with said we got a 3x hype combo on our emotes. Well done, everybody. Um, so we've been invited to the 79th World Science Fiction Con Convention, uh, also known as Discon, uh, in Washington, D.C. So I will be there live uh, in person on December the 15th, which I believe is a Wednesday, uh, at a very special panel about this uh, Smithsonian Futures Project. So anyone who's going to be in the DC area or lives in the DC area or who already purchased their badges for the World Science Fiction Convention, I will see you there. Make make plans to, uh, to be at that panel, to see me, to ask some good questions. It's going to be exciting. And then while I'm in town for that, I will be uh, me and the rest of the the creative team from ASU 
will be uh, going to Smithsonian and uh, being there live in person too. So uh, that'll be December the 15th for anyone who has access to Washington, D.C. will be there. Uh, and then on November the 9th, which is next Tuesday, I think, or this upcoming Tuesday, um, I will be on a virtual uh, panel with a bunch of people from Smithsonian ASU to talk about um, to talk about this futures exhibit and all the work that we did. So I'll be posting all the info for that up on social media probably later this week. I know they're finalizing all the uh, how to get access to that and everything, but it'll be a live uh, virtual panel. And I don't believe there will be any cost. I believe it's going to be free to everybody. So, but once I have the the links and stuff to share with you guys, I will. Um, but hopefully, you can show up, ask some good questions, hype it up a little bit. That'd be fun. Um, but yeah, real excited for it. And so I, I've kind of shared a few things about the images. There's some short stories that were written by some really famous authors, Madeline Ashby, uh, and. Uh, a couple of other people so some really cool stuff to check out uh, along with my artwork and then of course there's the whole entire exhibit that's going to be at the Smithsonian so really exciting news it, it's over eight months of my life invested into that so um, I hope that some of you get a chance to check it out for sure um, I'll probably be talking about it off and on uh, while we get more of the sort of like info about how they want us to like market it and stuff but really excited i mean what an honor and a privilege to get to do that i don't even know i really just don't even have words you know i mean to i've had so many like fortunate things in my art career to work with star wars and to work with comic book companies and disney and hot wheels and and now to have like you know smithsonian uh want to feature you know, commissioned me to create some artwork for them. It was really, uh, it wasn't even a dream come true because I wouldn't have thought to dream that big, right? That's that's the truth. I would never have thought to dream that big. So it's better than a dream come true. Uh, and I hope that all of you get a chance to uh, see the artwork either, you know, because I'm sharing it or through one of the virtual events or maybe even in person. But I'll be breaking it down a little bit more and talking about each individual piece and you know, the story behind the creation of each piece and things. So there'll be, there'll be more information to come. But um, yeah, big, big section of my life dedicated to that. So it's kind of nice to finally be able to talk about it. But clearly based on the chat, the Smithsonian talk is not hot. It's boring. So I'll move on to something else. But I did want to share with you guys. So just working on some little trees here. I love using the brush pen to do this kind of stuff because you can get these like really loose kind of organic uh, flowing shapes here. I think if there's time, we'll put some color down on this one tonight too. It's been a while since we've done a color one. So what'd you guys do for Halloween? Tell me about your Halloween. You know, where we live, it's really strange. It seems like some years we get a lot of trick-or-treaters, other years we get next to none. This year, like, we had only maybe three groups of trick-or-treaters between, like, sunset and, like, 8 p.m. It was almost none. And then at 8 p.m., we had, like, a group of families, and they all had, like, strollers and babies and stuff and kids in tow. And we must have had, like, between 8 and 8.30, like, I don't know, another 20 or 30 people come by. So it was really, really cool this year. Um, just because it was so sporadic, but there were some good costumes. There was one kid dressed as a pilot, like a little kid, like a five or six year old. And I was kind of thinking like, like what, what five year old, like, cause it was apparently like, I want to be a pilot, like, like a, like an airline pilot, not even like a military jet pilot, like just like an airline pilot. I'm like, is your dad a pilot? Did your dad, did your parents want you to have this costume? Cause I just can't imagine like a, a five year old kid or whatever being like, I want to be a commercial airline pilot for Halloween. Um, Woody says, no, 
uh, the Smithsonian talk is super cool, especially after all the top secret waiting. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. You know, it's 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 so weird that it's. I feel like it's a whole other thing outside of all the pop culture stuff that I do. But then I realized that this like science fiction convention, even though it's fancier or, or uh, more literate and it's got the Hugo Awards and all that, when you look at like what they're doing, you're like, it's kind of like a Comic Con. Like it's not that far removed. I mean, they probably don't want anyone to say that. They don't want to think of themselves. Like, but for me, for all intents and purposes, I'm like, oh yeah, I got this. It's gonna be like going to a Comic Con. Um, Monique says, guess I'll be here longer. He wants to practice with another team for 90 minutes. Oh, did you say swim team? Or what team did you say? I can't remember what you said if you said it was swim team or something else. Unchained Melody, look, I like you, Les Baxter, but this is not Tiki. Unchained Melody is not Tiki, no matter what you do to it. Uh when he says Halloween, uh, it was a Sunday. That's pretty much it. <laughs> so you, are, I don't remember. Are you guys so far out that you don't get visitors, or are you, or was it just really slow where you were? It was pretty hit or miss this year. So I was glad that we had that big group later in the night. It's just so strange. There's just no consistency, and a lot of people around here do the trunk or treat. Oh, you know what they do here in Arizona, because the weather is so good. People will just like open their garage doors and sit out on their patios and do the trick or treating on their patio. And so because we don't do that, because we don't have kids to entertain or anything, because we don't have kids, we just have our lights on and our front door open and people can come up and knock, you know, ring the doorbell or whatever. So I think some people skip our house because we're not just sitting outside. Some people will even turn their garages into mini haunted houses and stuff, but I don't know how many are doing that right now. Um Monique says, uh, it was Turkey Ween. That's pretty funny. Oh, it's baseball at the swim center. Okay. I thought you said that you, you were at the swim center. Baseball at the swim center. Okay. That's what I couldn't figure out. I was like, I was on swim team when I was a kid. I was, I was pretty good at some and not at others. Like I got, most of my first places were in backstroke. So I, I got a lot of backstroke ribbons and, uh, I would be on the relay races and I would do backstroke. And then in a pinch, I could do breaststroke. I wasn't as fast. So I was usually like second or third place on breaststroke. But um, freestyle, I was just not good enough to be in the top tier. And uh, uh, what's the other one? Breaststroke, freestyle, <laughs> backstroke, and uh, the butterfly. Oh, God, I suck at that. He's got no, not enough upper body even as a kid for that. So... But yeah, I lived in the water. I would be in the pool from, I think our swim team and swim lessons and stuff would start at like 6 a.m. And so, you know, we lived just down the street from this like pool. And so we'd be up there at 6 a.m. I don't even think we'd come home for lunch. I think maybe we'd come home for dinner, my sister and I. And then, like, as soon as dinner was over, she maybe didn't always do it, but I would walk back up there, and they closed at 9, and I would just be there, like, all day long, every day. So I'm, I'm a creature of the water, for sure. Um, when he says, apartment life for us, no trick-or-treating, period. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. I'm trying to think. Yeah. Yeah, I think when Christy and I lived in apartments, because when we were in Kansas City, we were lived in Midtown, and we were in a an old building that was a, some pretty cool apartments. And I think when we first moved in, there was no kids allowed. But then, like, the apartment above us, they let a woman and her kid move in, and then you just sound like there were people stomping on the floor all the time. Um, but, yeah, you had to be buzzed in, so there was no trick-or-treating there. I hadn't really thought about that. Been a while, yeah. But yeah, we know a lot of people who do the trunk or treat stuff where they drive to a school or a location or whatever and decorate the back of their cars like Star Wars or something else, you know, and then uh, hand out candy and everything. I think kind of maybe in like a pandemic lifestyle, like that's a, that's a pretty good alternative really because you're outside, a little bit safer.
But at least they kind of were figuring out ways for kids to do it. Because when I was a kid, man, Halloween was my favorite. Chrissy's not that big on Halloween, so I don't get all into it like I would like to. But, um... Because I would just go crazy with Halloween if it was just me. But... We both really enjoy Christmas, so we go we go really crazy decorating and stuff for the holidays. Like pretty much Black Friday, she'll be out shopping and I will just be decorating the outside of the house and then that weekend she'll do the inside. Or we'll do the inside together, but it's all the way she wants it, you know. Monique says, this place has a skate park, a huge pool, Ball fields, taekwondo classes, a dog park, and a playground. Wow, that's a nice that's a nice facility. Uh, what he says, maybe it's because I don't have kids and I'm an old man and the whole trunk or treat thing feels creepy to me. I hear you, Whitney. Like, we do our bowl of candy. If kids show up, they show up. We have friends that have kids. They do the trunk or treat thing. I think if you have kids, it's okay, but you're right. It would be kind of weird to be like, is this the uh, parking lot where the kids are going to show up? i got a van full of candy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Whitney says, when I lived overseas, Halloween was a whole night thing. We roamed the housing areas for hours. Oh, I'm sure, man. What, um, was there a specific country that you were in? Because I know Halloween is like, in certain places, it's like not even a thing. And then obviously in other places, it's a big thing. I've been in other countries for Christmas a lot of times. Germany, the Middle East, and New Year's. But I don't think I've been out of the country for Halloween. Not that I remember, at least. Now, I know Christy has, because she talked about how, at least when she was living in the UK for a while, before we met, the Halloween was definitely not a thing over there at the time. They had their Guy Fox Day, of course, but no, no Halloween. Now that's probably changed. I mean, you know, with the internet and social media and everything, all this stuff kind of has just become global, which is kind of cool. It's cool to see other people like interpret holidays and stuff, you know. Uh, Whitney says, Philippines for three years. Subic Bay in the house. Oh, that's cool, Philippines. Do you do you mind telling me like what you're doing there? Was that was that work or I'm super interested. In anything international. I mean you guys know that. We used to do the do our Brian and Christy travel shows and stuff but oh those days are over let me tell you how busy Christy is now Ooh, doggies between school and hi-fi and everything else she's working like crazy like crazy I tell you starting to come together. I think we're gonna put some color down on here. Navy Brad, okay. Oh, so when you were in there for three years, oh, was your stepdad was stationed there and you were there from 10 to 13, nice. Um, so that's like a, that's like, what, middle school kind of years. Um, how was that for you? Was it uh, enjoyable or was it upsetting? Especially if you had to leave your friends when you were nine. Like, did you see it as like a big adventure or did you see it as like a hassle and a bummer? Because I could see that going either way. One of my really good friends, um, his dad was, a, or is an ambassador. And uh, he got to be the ambassador to America from where they're from when my friend was, I think, 13. 
And so then his next position was going to be somewhere else. And so he just set my friend and his brother up in a condo and it's like, okay, you're the man of the house now. You're in charge of, you know, getting your brother and yourself to school and take care of things. And I've got to go be the ambassador somewhere else now. But he wanted them to have like all the benefits of America, you know. Seems like a really rough way to grow up, but my friend is the like CEO of a giant corporation now and things are going well for him. So he certainly learned to be self-sufficient, but I don't know that many of us could imagine growing up like that, you know, where you're just like, at age 13, your dad's like, you're in charge, see ya. Make a better life for yourself. Uh, Whitney says, in hindsight, I wish I took more advantage of the situation, but it was hard. So much moving around almost all my life. I was old enough to not get into too much trouble and able to remember a bit. I just wish I did more culturally. I get that. I totally get that, man. Like, that's that, that's just hindsight, though, because I think of, like, my first year in the Middle East, and it's just so much adjusting to things. And I was doing it as an adult. I can't imagine, you know, living in another country at, like, age 10 you're trying to adjust to things, you're trying to make friends, you're trying to navigate the culture as well as just navigate the, the area, you know? And um, it's tough, man, it's tough. So, you know, I think about, we were fortunate enough to go back to the Middle East, gosh, I don't know, whatever it was, seven years in a row, eight years in a row, and sometimes multiple times a year. And, um, you know, I got to where I, missed it and I wanted to go back and there were parts of the culture that I really liked and I wanted to experience again and you know there's other things maybe you don't like because they're different but whatever you 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 get a different kind of appreciation you know and you don't get that from just one visit and certainly at a young age it'd be really hard to to have that kind of perspective I think I mean you know there's probably some kids that are mature or something but I certainly wouldn't have been I'd have been like all wrapped up in my own self and my own feelings and my own friends and all that stuff so our very first year we had a one of the professors brought her daughter and went to like the uh, the British school there it was rough on her you know it was tough it's hard to I'm trying to think if her daughter was nine or ten but you know somewhere in there and it's, it's very difficult to to adapt to that kind of situation, especially somewhere where, you know, English is not the first language for most of the people, even if it is considered the second language for most of the people. So, you know, definitely a challenge, I think. Um, Whitney says, hard coming back stateside, new kid in a tiny town from a place no one had heard of. Plus, I was the weird kid who played D&D &D and liked hard rock music. Right at the tail end of the Satanic Panic and OMG. Well, it sounds like you and I have that part in common. Um, what, where did you, so when you came back to the States, where was the first place you guys were located at? Sounds like it must have been the Midwest or similar. Bible Belt or something like that. Yeah, I get that. I was raised in like a super religious family. And uh, so I was always I was always like the odd kid because I was either like way more religious than everybody and to a freaky level, you know, that scared them, or I mean, I was essentially grew up in like a cult situation, or you know, um, once I got out of that, then I was like rebelling and you know theater student and gothed out and everything so I, I never fit in to this day I don't feel like I fit in you know which is I know that's my hang up but it's just how you feel like Can I complain for a second and say that I can't believe that we don't have a quench press here tonight? Seems kind of sketchy to me.
Uh, when you said stepdad got stationed in Long Beach, and we moved to where my grandparents retired to, the tiny town in the Sierra Nevadas. Oh, wow. That's crazy, man. I mean, Long Beach, I could see where, like, theoretically, that should be a lot of fun because it's so cool. But then I can also see where if you're coming there at the right age and you don't fit in and you don't have that experience, like, it could be pretty sucky. So I totally, totally get that. Uh, all right, where do you want to start with this? Let's start with some blue. Uh, Monique says, I don't fit in anywhere. I guess that's why we all get along. We're like the land of misfits toys. Yes, that's the truth. That is the truth. You know, I'm this weird mix of like, I'm like very, very social person, but at the same time, um, I don't do a lot of the social things that like other people do. Like I'm not really big into sports or certain types of things. And so social situations can be really awkward for me. I think that's why I love things like, you know, Star Wars Celebration and Epcot and Disney D23 because like, you know, those situations are much more comfortable for me and in my wheelhouse than like the normal stuff where people are wanting to talk about, you know, football scores and baseball scores and stuff. And I'm just like, what? But then on the other side of the spectrum, like I don't do like the tabletop gaming and stuff. And so when I'm around some of my friends in comics, I don't fit in there either because they're like, what do you mean you don't do like gaming three nights a week? I'm like, well, I'm creating art. I'm doing, I'm like trying to survive. Like I don't, I don't have time for that stuff. I mean, I, it might be cool, but you know, like you have like a day job and earn a bunch of money and you can take off all kinds of leisure time to play your games. I'm, I'm, I'm at the, the whim of my clients. And so that means sometimes I'm working 18 hour days up until midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m. working on comics and stuff. So the idea of having like a set game night seems just like totally unrealistic to me because, you know, I don't have a set schedule. I have to, I have to jump when DC and Marvel say jump. Um, Whitney says mountains just small town people i did enjoy fishing growing up there though oh that's cool you know i was thinking about that recently um you know so I, technically i tell people i'm from kansas city but i grew up just like 30 minutes outside of kansas city and then another 30 minutes outside of that you're in like farm country so there's this really weird like transition area where you're in the city and you're not in the city right so I look back at my childhood and I thought I hated it so much, but I was very lucky. I got so much outdoorsy stuff, you know, nature trails and, you know, fishing and beautiful parks to visit and all sorts of good experiences that I look back on now that I didn't really appreciate as a kid because I'm like, I just want to get out of this podunk town and escape the racism and the hillbillies and stuff, you know, and and then when I did, I moved to Seattle right after high school. And then you realize that, like, oh, there's racism and hillbillies everywhere. They're just racist against different groups of people, right? You know, you know, growing up in the Midwest, everyone's racist against black people. And then you move to Seattle and now you find, oh, well, all the people here are either racist against Native Americans or racist against Asians. So there's just no escaping the stupidity no matter where you move to. It's just a different they're just taking their stupidity out on a different group of people. So it's, it, that was a lesson that I had to learn. I had to learn that, you know, the, the place itself isn't necessarily bad or evil. It's, it's the people, right? It's like they, they make it good or bad. And then you just have to learn. I mean, I, I was pretty fortunate early on. I learned to just cut toxic people out of my life and be like, I don't need this. I don't need you. And if you're going to behave that way, you're really no friend of mine anyway. And that's a lonely existence sometimes, but I think it's healthier in other ways. So it may mean that you have less friends, but then it also means that, that the friends that you do have are like more authentic and, um, you know, less likely to be assholes, I guess, for lack of a better word, but you know, 
you, we're all hypocrites about something, but gosh, you really don't want to be a hypocrite about stuff you care about. And if you find out that some friends of yours are the opposite of your beliefs on certain things, you're just like, no, this isn't cool. Like, why would I want to be friends with you if you're that type of person? I don't. I'm out. Sorry. See you later. Because there's just not time for shitty friends, you know? I'll go find some better friends or just no friends. Whatever. Anything's better than shitty friends. Uh, Monique says, I love podunk towns. I got to tell you, Monique, I kind of agree with that. I love, like, if you're on a road trip you're passing through somewhere like I want to stop and find the authentic restaurants and hotels the old-timey hotels and really get a taste of the place where you're visiting and I think that can be some people don't aren't into that right some people are not into that at all they want to they want to experience sameness right they're like McDonald's is the same in every state and Holiday Inn is the same in every state and they just want to have homogeny throughout their lives because it's safe and it's easy and it doesn't challenge them. It doesn't require any discomfort on their part. I want the discomfort. I kind of crave the discomfort. Like I want to I want to walk into a place that I've never seen before and I want to experience things that I've never experienced before. And they can be good or bad, and I might leave a thing and be like, well, I don't want to have that experience again. But if I have it once, then at least I've tried it. And um, to me, I think that's, for me personally, it's really important to, to do that. And then you get to, you know, you can appreciate a location um, on a little bit different level instead of like, oh, those are pretty mountains. You're like, well, yeah, those are pretty mountains. But, you know, this place is also known for the type of honey that they make and they have this local type of you know whatever it is this local type of biscuits and gravy that only they make or you know whatever it is right and then you can carry that around with you for the rest of your life even if you never go back to that place you've had that experience and you've collected that experience and made a part of who you are and i think that's so valuable that it's worth whatever discomfort you know that comes along with it uh, Monique says, if I had my way, though, I'd live on an island by myself because I don't like people anymore. Well, I hear that. I think, the, I don't know, is that an age thing or an intelligence thing or both? I don't know. But I feel like I have lower tolerance for certain types of people the older I get. An island life, never a bad thing. Right? Never bad. Let's... Do our greens next. Trying to work smart here. So, Monique, is there an island in particular that kind of calls to you? Have you been to a few islands? Uh, Monique says the Dakotas with their cinnamon bun chili. Oh, see, there's something I don't know about. Dakotas with cinnamon bun chili. Okay. I'm curious. I remember visiting... Uh, Wisconsin. I was up there for some art events that they invited me to and I got to go to a real Wisconsin supper club out in the middle of nowhere. That was very entertaining. And I got to have the Wisconsin old-fashioned cocktail which is made with brandy instead of bourbon. Totally different but also delightful. So getting those kind of local experiences is really, really fun. You know? I enjoy it. But the cinnamon bun chili, I I have to find out more about that. Cinnamon bun chili, like, sounds like a dare. Well, what's up, kitty? Are you screaming? Yeah. I don't the Twitter... Oh, really? Yeah, are you bored or are you hungry? Mm-hmm, both. Okay. Oh, my goodness. It sucks to be you. Yeah, it's a shame we had to rescue you from the streets of Phoenix because you were probably way better off there. Oh, poor boy. So yeah, he just got a bunch of his teeth pulled. And when I say a bunch of his teeth pulled, guess how many teeth he had to have pulled. Now we got him, his teeth were all messed up, his gums were all messed up. 
I'll let you guys guess on the chat a little bit. How many teeth do you think Hassan had to have extracted because of his dental problems? We'll give you a few minutes to enter your guesses on the chat. Whitney says 11. We'll see if Monique's on there, if she says anything or not. Whitney's guess is 11 teeth extracted. Monique says all. Um, 16, he had 16 teeth pulled. Can you believe it? 16, I didn't even know he had 16 teeth. Yeah, 16 teeth pulled. And uh, they said maybe maybe next year he might need a few more out. So he still has his are they still called canines canines on a cat on a feline? Uh, he still has his saber teeth and then a few of other teeth, but not many. Um, but I tell you what, his breath smells a million times better now, um, and he's like a new cat. He's full of energy and he's exploring around, and now he's doing the screaming thing, which is annoying. Uh, but he is like a new cat, so that's exciting. Uh, he's definitely happier. He's love. He's more lovey, and he feels more comfortable in the house. So that part's good. Um, when he says, "Do I is losing baby teeth, which is great. Do not miss those needle teeth at all." Oh man, yeah. Oh, is it your dog is losing his baby teeth? Is that what it is? Uh, when he says it, now he gums his soft kitty food. Yeah, and they told us to keep giving him crunchy food, like dry food, too. So he's got some dry. Now, he had to have two weeks where he couldn't have any dry food, but now he can have dry food again. He, he's he got enough teeth and gums. He crunches it up or he swallows it or whatever, but uh, he does get wet food, too. Uh, Whitney's like, wow, 16 teeth. Yeah, I know. It's crazy, right? Totally. Not, I mean, I had no idea. I thought, oh, you know, they're going to pull some teeth, but I was like, I was thinking like four max or something, maybe six, but no, 16. It's insane. It's totally insane. 16 teeth. I don't even know he had 16 teeth. Because he certainly is not gonna let me, you know, some animals, if you know, like you raise them from a kitten or a puppy, they'll let you play with their mouths and stuff. But this guy, no, no, no. He doesn't want you near his mouth. He doesn't want you near the other end either. Like you get your hand too close to his tail, he like, sucks his tail down and like sits down. He's like, I don't want you anywhere near my back end. I think when the vets tried to take his temperature, they didn't tell me how bad he was, but they said he was bad. He got in trouble for sure. He was not having it. He's like, you take your own temperature. You're not getting anywhere near me. Got a little greenery working in there. Hopefully that's starting to look like something on the screen. <laughs> oh, when he's blaming the iPad keyboard on, on his typos there. It's Rossi, right? Rossi is the dog's name. Like Martini and Rossi. Guys, don't let me drink the paint water when I need to be drinking my cocktail. I've done it once. It was not pleasant. I didn't swallow, but it was still not pleasant. I don't even know if you guys, you guys didn't catch it that night, but I played back the video and I like pick it up and I take a sip and I go right back in there. Monique says it's looking great. Thank you, Monique. And Whitney says, yes, it's Rossi. Oh, we didn't even need to hydrate. Cheers to you, Whitney. And Monique redeemed to hydrate too. I mean, just a minute, Monique, and I'll do that one. Let's put some, uh, I guess we'll put some pinstripes on this awning. And we'll start mixing up some like brown values and stuff. You guys hear those jungle drums? Apparently this one's called conversation on the skins. This is Les Baxter. I don't know if you guys like Les Baxter or not, if you listen to this kind of music, but 
I think uh, Les Baxter is really got some good, some of the best like mid-century tiki stuff going on. I think. There's a couple of others, but he's, his stuff seems to be like exceptionally good. Really gets you in the mood. And I find that when we go to tiki bars in real life, they'll often be playing quite a bit of his music as well. And it's nice, like there was so much music I was trying to search out earlier in my life. And now that we have Apple Music and other streaming services, it's just so easy to find it all now, you know, which is kind of cool. I mean, I had like deep cuts of stuff like Esquivel that you could never find. And now it's just, it's all there, you know. But I'm kind of weirdo in that way. I really am into stuff from like the 40s through the 60s, movies and music and all kinds of weirdo stuff. But that, that comes also from my religious upbringing, strangely enough, because I wasn't allowed to listen to secular radio or television. So I could only really... Um, you know, I could watch public television or Christian television. And I could listen to music that didn't have lyrics. That was okay. Um, or it had to be Christian music. And so I listened to a lot of, like, classical music and, like, for lack of a better word, like, almost like, you know, movie scores and stuff growing up because it didn't have words and so I could listen to it. And it sounds ridiculous, but that was almost like a way of rebelling for me, you know? Like I could listen to Beethoven and Bach and they couldn't stop me because it wasn't rock and roll. It didn't have lyrics. And so, you know, I guess early on that gave me an appreciation for those sort of like symphonic sounds and stuff, you know? And even now, like if we go to the ballet or something, I love the dancing, don't get me wrong, but I'm really like into the symphony part, into the instrumentation and the melodies and everything. Like, I think all that type of music really does it for me. So Monique redeemed hydrate, so cheers to you. All right, let's get together some golds and some browns next. Let's. Let's make a little gold. But let me know about your, oh, Monique says my phone's running out. I'm not sure how long it'll hold out. Well, Monique, we're about an hour in. I've got at least 15 or 20 more minutes here. So you hang out as long as you want to, but it's been really good catching up with you tonight. I like your comments about living on an island. I think every time we do one of these, we learn just a little bit more about each other. You know, it's kind of fun. I recognize this tune. This one's called Jungle Jalopy. What a great, what a great name. Jungle Jalopy. I like it. So yeah, this place is on Shelter Island. And like I said, it's been there for over 65 years. Um, you can go online, look for Bally High Shelter Island, find all kinds of cool pictures. But apparently several years ago, they did a $4 million renovation on this place. So it's kind of cool to see the before and after photos because they've really stayed true to what it looked like before. And I'm, I'm using photos of how it looked before to reference here, but, um, but the new version looks like, you know, like this, just modernized, you know, they got rid of the like awnings and went with like more modern, uh, 
like sunshades and stuff, but it's really cool. And if you've never been to Shelter Island in San Diego, um, it was basically built to compete with Hawaii. Because, you know, we forget like Hawaii became a state and all of a sudden all these tourists are going to see Hawaii because you don't need a passport. It's no longer a foreign land. It's part of the United States, right? So people start going there and then, but other places in America where people had been visiting <laughs> were suffering. And so uh, San Diego was one of those places and they decided that they would just compete with Hawaii by building an island that sort of like simulated some of the best parts of Hawaii, you know, beaches, tiki bars, restaurants, shops, that sort of thing. So that's kind of how, how it all came to be, you know? And so even now, if you go to, to Shelter Island and stay at one of the hotels or whatever, even if they've gotten rid of their tiki bar or whatever else that used to be there, it still has that Polynesian flavor to like the resort itself, which is kind of cool. Especially once you know about it, you're like, oh, now this makes more sense. Like, why did anybody tell me about this? Hey guys, let me know if you can hear me now or if there's an echo. There was some weird message that came up on my end about audio input and I think something screwed up. But I don't know if I can fix it without killing the stream. Okay, just let me know if you can actually hear me normal or if there's like a crazy echo because I have I basically have two different inputs for the mic right now, and I think one's 
not working, the one that normally works. So I had this weird message pop up on my screen that obviously you guys can't see. And it was like, new audio device detected. Do you want to use it? And I'm like, ignore that. I'm in the middle of a stream, but apparently it freaked out anyway. So if you can hear me, I'm still waiting to hear about Monique's thing about how close am I to quench press now. I missed I missed something in the conversation there. I was busy with the art. It was normal, then it got echo-ish. Okay. If I have to, I can probably turn off the music and use this other input for the mic, and it'll probably work. Not an echo per se, but slightly strange sounding. Okay. I'm telling you, I saw, like I said, I had a message pop up, so I know something weird happened. But I don't know why or what. And I know, I know from past experience, if I try to fix it, it'll crash the stream. So let me try something else. If I kill the music, can you hear my voice and does it sound better? Uh, you probably can't hear the music now, but maybe the voice sounds better, so let me know. Um, Monique says, I'm in Poway and I know he goes to San Diego, but he's always in San Diego. Um, how close in proximity are we at this time? Oh, I'm not sure. The fact that he's not on the stream makes me think he probably is traveling. He's always out and about for um, some reason or other. Let me, let's pull up his Instagram. Hold on. Quench press Instagram. Hmm. Hold on. That's weird. Just give me Damon's Instagram. We'll find it. Insta. Of course it wants me to sign. Something really weird happened. It's like I'm signed out now and everything. Very strange. All right, we're gonna track him down. We're gonna see where he's at. Maybe. Everything's gone goofy. We're, we'll make it work. All right, we'll give that a second and we'll come back to it. See where he's out about. When he says, yeah, check his Instagram, his poor liver. Oh man, I'll tell you what, man. You know, he's what, six foot seven? And so I'm, I'm 6'2". I'm usually in my group, you know, I can have three cocktails or so and it's no big deal. But yeah, he can be like two ahead of me and just be not phased at all. It's crazy. And we're talking like the real strong mixologist cocktails. You know the ones. You know the ones I'm talking about. The ones where there's like five kinds of liquor and no fruit juice. And you're like, is this a cocktail or is this just a liquor store in a class? You know? Um, when he says, my car play has been doing that lately while navigating, it just stops navigating. Oh my goodness. Did you see the story about ways? Now it wasn't in America, it was outside of America. But there was one day where the ways algorithm was off in this other country and it started sending people in essentially the opposite direction they needed to go oops you know some people are smart they're not going to follow it other people are going to follow it until they realize that it's that they're now you know three hours away from their destination and they're not getting any closer Uh, 
Monique says, oh, those are the ones where it's like three sips and I'm down. Yeah, I hear that. I don't know what's up with Instagram, guys, but I'm having trouble pulling in. Maybe that's related to whatever's going on with my computer right now. Oh, here it comes. All right, now let's find Quench. Quench. Quench Press. Followed by Chow Time, of course. Let's see his latest photo. Oh, New York City and Chinatown. Yeah, I forgot. I think he was in New York. I'm trying to see. We yeah, one hour ago. So, Quench Press is in New York. He's posting from the Apothecary Bar in Chinatown in New York City. So there you go. He's in New York. Beautiful cocktails on his Instagram, as always. I'm sure he's making friends with with new bartenders there and stuff. So. If you don't follow him on Instagram, be sure to do so. I'll put it in the chat right now. When he says, one hour ago he was in New York City. Yes, that's what it looks like. So he's either there or he's just posted the photo, but I bet he's there. Although it's a Tuesday. It's like a work day. Eh, you never know with him. But yes, looks like looks like New York. So there you go. <laughs> when he says, I don't have Instagram. That's okay. You know, the nice thing is you don't have to have Instagram to look other people up on Instagram on your web browser. So that can be handy sometimes. Um, what was I going to say? Something about Instagram. Well, I lost it. I lost it. Something about Quench Press and Instagram, but I don't know what it was now. So we'll just, we'll just forget about it. But yeah, at least he's posting for New York, so I don't know. He's probably there somewhere. Knowing him. I mean, you know, he's awesome. He goes to like over a hundred live shows a year of musicians. And I don't know, I can't even count how many nights a week he's out at like bars and clubs and stuff now so it's a lot that's all I know is it's a lot let's put a little black in there let me make that a little darker oh it tells you you need to log in to see the profile oh that may be something they've done recently that's unfortunate I've seen that with Pinterest now too used to you could go and just look at Pinterest, even if you weren't logged in. And now like you, you might look at one or two pins and then it'll be like, oh, you have to log on to see any more. You're like, really? I mean, it's not like I don't have an account. It's just sometimes you're not logged in on that device or whatever. And you're like, I just want to look at this one thing real quick or share it with somebody or whatever. And then you're like, no, I don't want to log in. Make sure I wasn't like painting off screen here where you couldn't see anything. So saved our Tiki Idol here for last. Monique, how's your phone doing? I might, uh, I might do a preemptive credits here while I'm painting just to make sure that everybody sees their name. Because we'll probably go until you know, 30 after the hour, but I don't want your phone to poop out on you. So let's just take 30 seconds and do that. Woo, Catherine. Woo, Monique. Woo, Whitney. Thank you guys so much. Woo, 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 woo. Look at those credits. You guys rock. You guys rock so hard. So amazing. Now, where did my, where did my Discord stream go? Oh, here we are. Awesome. Okay, I'm back, and we're back. Um, oh, when he said 14%. Okay, well, I'm glad I ran the credits while you could still see them. When he says, that was me in Twitter last night. Deleted my Twitter a while ago, but needed a link and just couldn't get it to work. Oh man, I hear that. I 
hear that. I have um, so I deleted Facebook and Twitter and everything off my phone. Probably a bit, I guess, right, maybe right around the time the pandemic started, maybe right before that. Now, I still do use those services. I I have a, a, a service that I use to post to all the social media links and everything. But I just found it was better for my mental health to get that stuff off my phone. And with some of the evil villainy coming out of Facebook lately, I've considered just dropping in the whole thing. Now, would that just be a death knell to my career? I don't know. But I don't know that maybe I should care. I mean, I should have enough faith in my own art and my own abilities to not worry about, you know, can I survive without Instagram and Facebook, you know? So I'm, I'm contemplating it. I really am. Because I hate, I hate being a hypocrite. Like, I, I want these companies to get better, but... If they don't, I mean, why should I support them? But at the same time, like it's how I connect with people, so it's a really, it's a really weird conundrum to be in. Because there's some people that, like, if I got rid of social media, I might not ever connect with them again, and that's, that's really, really sad, you know. But maybe if I did, maybe I'd do more with my email newsletter or something. I don't know, but it's definitely something I've considered. Speaking of newsletter, did anybody get my um, Smithsonian announcement in their inbox today? I'll be interested to see how people respond to that because there's no, there's nothing to buy, right? There's nothing, there's no link to click to purchase anything. It's literally just an update for me to you announcing the Smithsonian project. And I can see where some people would find that appealing that there's no there's no sales message but i know other people won't other people will actually be upset they'll be like why are you sending me an email if there's nothing for me to buy so it'll be it'll be interesting to see how people respond to that because we're fickle right as people as humans we're fickle Doing some shading on this guy. And I think we'll do like a wash of color over him. Maybe we'll mix up like a little bit different shade of brown or something for him. And maybe like a gray brown so that he pops a little bit. Hi kitty, what's up, Hassan? Are you very bored and lonely? Will Indio not play with you? No. I'd pick you up and show you everybody on the camera, but I know you'd run away. What's up, buddy? Okay, you're gonna run away? All right. Okay, now we're talking about some social media here, people. This is what I like to see. Let's get this conversation going. Uh, Monique says, I have Twitter. Oh, wait, it keeps scrolling. Um, I have Twitter only because I need it for work and for work and have it linked. Oh, I have Facebook because I need it for work, but I refuse to get Instagram or TikTok or any other uh, crap. And if anybody leaves Facebook, I won't follow them elsewhere. Uh, so I'll see you on LinkedIn or Twitter, or I won't see you anymore. But I'm just one person. Do what's best for you. Well, I am on LinkedIn, so that's good to know, but yeah. And again, I haven't made a decision, but I've definitely thought about it. I, 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 I have, I've definitely had thoughts recently that maybe it just doesn't even make sense to support these companies if they're going to just be evil. Um, when it says your feelings about Zuckerberg and their whole meta situation, oh my gosh. I mean, I think really that's just a distraction, right? I mean, the whole meta thing is just like, people are mad at Facebook, so we will just won't call ourselves Facebook anymore. And... We'll change our company name so that if Facebook gets in trouble, we're not in trouble. We'll be like, oh, that wasn't us. That was our Facebook division. They're so bad, we hate them too. I mean, that kind of feels like what they're doing, right? 
And you want to be like, do they think we're so dumb? And you go, oh yeah, right. Most people are so dumb. So, you know, they know exactly what they're doing and they're not doing it out of any reason other than to cover their own asses. And the sad part, or one of the sad parts, is that Zuckerberg's charity owned a company named Meta, and this company owned the name. And they basically just said, okay, charity that we own, we're taking the name Meta, and we're closing you down. So not only did they change their name, they closed down a charity that was actually doing some good for the world. So fuck them. How about that? Um... Oh my gosh, you guys, the, 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 the social media stuff is coming in faster than I can read it. Uh, Whitney says, Twitter was not good for my mental health and Facebook wasn't as bad, but nothing positive. Katie deactivated her Facebook the other day and said she doesn't miss it. Instagram is it for me. Comics and beer and dogs and bands and Anna Kendrick. That's all I need. Yeah, I hear you. I'm, I'm still on Instagram. I know Facebook owns it now. Um, so far, I haven't got negativity from Instagram. I know some other people have. They said like, uh, people have had body issues and stuff. I totally get that. I tend to be looking at Star Wars art and stuff like that on it. Maybe some fast cars or motorcycles. But So for me, it's easy. I don't really engage in a different way. Um, I understand other people do. Um, but yeah, I'm on Twitter. Most of my comics feedback is on Twitter. But because I worked on the issue of Super uh, Superman where um, their son came out as bisexual. There's been a lot of negativity there. I had to block more people in like one day than I've ever had to block on Twitter before. It was kind of crazy. Whitney says Zuckerberg needs a friend. Uh, Monique says any of the other crap. <laughs> Voice to text fail. Oh yeah. And she heard the kitten. Kitty! Uh, Whitney says I was confused about the southern kind. Oh, I think she just meant social. Yeah. Uh... Whitney says, like when Katie uses text to talk to our dogs, names come out as Ross and 90. Oh, I like that instead of Rossy, Ro Ross 90. That's great. That sounds like a motorcycle rider or something. You know, Ross, number 90. Oh, Whitney says, they change their name and we fall for it. Yeah, I think, you know, most people will, right? I mean, all it takes is time, right? All it takes is time. Give them some time and... You know, I'll, they'll come out and be like, I'm like, well, the meta company doesn't agree with anything that this Facebook group is doing. And that's terrible. We would never support that. And we're going to take steps to make sure that it doesn't happen in the future. And we're not going to be smart enough to be like, but you're the ones that did it in the first place. Right? We're supposed to just all forget about that. And a lot of people will. Um, Monique says, yeah, I was trying not to have to type all that out, but voice to text is an epic fail. Um, when he says, I commented on someone's Star Wars art post and got so much shit and then got some horrible DMs. Oh my gosh. That's, uh, yeah, I don't know what's wrong with the world. Like, I think when you see all this news about like airline flights being canceled because of unruly passengers and people being kicked off of flights for fighting, like actual, you know, fist fights and stuff. That just tells you like this whole like trolling online thing has moved into real life now. Like people aren't content to just hide behind their keyboards now. They're like going out and like, you know, punching people and starting fights and stuff over like nonsense. And so we've definitely entered like this new phase in life where there's just no escape from it, right? I mean, none. The trolls are going to be trolls, and they don't care. And they almost don't care about the consequences, right? Because, you know, this whole thing about, like, fighting on airplanes and stuff. I mean, there's major fines and stuff being levied against these people, along with, you know, some jail time and stuff. And I don't think they care. They're like, I'm really self-righteous. And my beliefs trump everybody else's rights and beliefs because it's all about me. I perceive that you kicked my seat back or breathed on me or did something else on the airplane or tried to make me wear a mask or whatever it is. And now I'm going to fight you. I mean, people are punching 
you know, airline employees punching their fellow passengers, getting in like major crazy fist fights on airplanes and stuff. And these are these are supposed to be adults? Are you kidding me? It's ridiculous. There's no adults. We're all reduced to children. Bad behaved little children. And it's kind of sad and pathetic, really. Oh, so I never finished the story. I was going to tell you guys about this. So, <laughs> overheard at a salon is uh, the, the, the worker at the salon gets a FaceTime call from their kid. And their kid says, uh, hey, we're out of school early today. Can you Venmo me some cash? We're all going to go to McDonald's. And the mom says, okay, I'm Venmoing you 10 bucks right now. The kid says, thanks. He FaceTimes back like half an hour later. Says they threw everybody out of McDonald's because we were so rowdy. They actually locked the doors of the McDonald's. So we went to KFC instead. But I totally played those suckers. When I got my food, I told them they forgot my shake. And I kept arguing with them and arguing with them until they gave me the ice cream shake. Those freaking suckers. I never ordered a shake and I never paid for a shake. I totally scammed them. How old do you think this child is? Just take a guess. I will sit here quietly and let you take your guess on how old this horrible, terrible child is. And while we wait, I'll read a few of these. Um, let's see, let me go back and get these. Oh, hi kitty, are you screaming? Monique says, there are some new theme songs. Gonna be that shaggy song. It wasn't me, yeah, no doubt. It wasn't me. Um, where'd you go, kitty? Oh, hi. Okay, run away. Um, uh, Woody says, Instagram's usually okay. Also helps I don't use my real name. Yeah, for sure. Woody says, there's no consequences for their actions. Monique says, people have no boundaries anymore. Social media has made them feel like they're entitled to overstep, overstep, and interject at will and force themselves and their opinions on anyone and everyone as they please. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Winnie says, freedoms. All right, Monique guessed 10, Whitney guessed 16, and then Whitney guessed eight. Um, 10 is the correct answer. So this kid is 10 years old, and he and his friends were so rowdy or whatever they were doing, that not only did they get kicked out of the McDonald's, the McDonald's employees felt threatened enough that they locked the doors to the McDonald's. Now, the kid didn't say if they called the cops or anything, but let's guess what probably happened there, right? Then the kid goes with his friends to the KFC and scams the KFC out of a shake. I don't even know if KFC had shakes, but there you go. And then brags about it to his mother because that's how cool that this 10-year-old kid thinks he is. And the mother's reaction is, you know, Oh, boys will be boys. That's just how it is. Isn't that sweet? Oh, he's just so, he's so darling. He's so, he's so precocious. No, he's a jackass. And he's gonna be a horrible, horrible human being. Hi, Hassan. What's up, buddy? Yeah, are you screaming? And the mother totally condoned this behavior. So that kind of tells you everything you need to know. At 10 years old. Can you believe it? 10. I know I sound like Grandpa Miller right now. And get off my lawn! Get off my lawn, whippersnappers! Leave those KFC people alone! You know, those, those poor people are making minimum wage and these kids are coming in there and raising hell. It's kind of crazy. When he says, I would have got my ass whooped. You know, I would have too, except for I would have never been there in the first place because my parents would never give me $10 or $5 or $8. So if I wanted something like that, I had to earn it on my own. What do you guys think? There we go. The Bali High. Got the Tiki Idol up front. Got the Tiki Bar in the background there. Two stories tall. Gotta love that. Overlooking the waterfront there on uh, 
on the island. Kind of cool. Some hot social media talk tonight, though. I like that. It's nice when we all get fired up and have something to say. Let's do just a little wash. Some ground color in here. Finish this thing off. It's looking a little, little plain down here at the bottom, I think. There we go, that's a lot nicer. Much better. Much, much better. All right, I like it. It was fun. I don't know if it's the best thing I've ever sketched out on here, but it was fun. We haven't done a color one in a while. And we did, we did our monster one, so it was nice to get back to something a little bit different. We'll have to do a mug update next time too, I think. So I don't really have any news, but we've got some got some stuff in the works. Definitely have some stuff in the works. Uh, what else we got tonight? I don't know. I think that's it, guys. Uh, Wendy says looks good. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Let me take a look here. Hmm. Charles Lister or Outhouse Cartoons? Of course, they're showing me a commercial. Uh, Woody says it was fun. Oh, it was fun to catch up with you guys. I really like talking. Monique says it's pretty. <sighs> Monique's at 7%. All right, I'm going to sign off, guys. Um, good to see everybody. Really enjoyed hanging out tonight. Uh, it's fun to catch up. Check your inbox. See if you got that email from me about the Smithsonian stuff. Hopefully it reached you. And uh, we'll do it all again next week. We'll have something new to share next week. In the meantime, thanks again for subscribing. Thanks again for supporting me here on Twitch and on Patreon and on my store and everywhere else. Have a good night.